Yes. The state Hello. of Washington. <laughs> Hello. Oh my gosh. We are live in, in Facebook. Hi there. How are you all? Um, again, I'm here, Cindy Harrison, your host of Artful Webinars and Artfully Connected with Cindy Harrison with our Sandy, my helper, and our featured artist, Hi. Nancy Todd. <laughs> I know, it's a crazy Wednesday night, I guess. But I um, thank you for being here, Nancy. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for asking me to be on. This is good. It's like, it's been too long. It's like, have you know, why haven't we done this a long time ago? I don't know. My brain is mush. But, yeah. well, but you're here now, and that's all that matters. So I want to thank everybody who is watching in the group and those who are taking their time to watch the replay. Thank you so much for choosing to do so. If you have any questions for Nancy, feel free to post them in the comment section and I will relay the message for you, the question for you, or if, if it's a, a replay that you're watching and you have a question, go ahead and post it. Put a little at sign in front of Nancy's name or my name, and, um, and we'll make sure that, that Nancy gets that question and uh, can answer it for you. But yep. also, you have, a, you have a, a Facebook page too, Nancy. I do. I do. I, I keep forgetting to go to my Facebook page. I post things through the groups that I belong to, you know, Toll Painters Unite. I posted something through your group today about an upcoming class, and I keep forgetting to go uh, to my Facebook page, so I've been pretty negligent about that. Well, go ahead and tell us what it is so that people can put it on their to-do list. Well, it's just on Nancy Scott at face Nancy Scott CDA uh, is my Facebook Business page. page? It's your business page. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And uh, like I said, I forget lots of times to, to go and update that. Uh, I try to keep up with my website and uh, I put, usually I put things out to Toll Painters Unite or some of the other decorative painting groups that I belong to, you know, mm -hmm. for people to see, but I forget to do my Facebook page. Yeah. Well, don't worry. I, I, I have the same problem with Artful Webinars. I do have a business page as well. And mm -hmm. then I, I don't always, I don't always go over there. And update mm -hmm. it because I'm doing so much with Artfully Connected and people yeah. have have just, you know, I'm there, I must mm -hmm. do it all. So mm -hmm. I just leave it there. But um, Sandy's been helping me a lot with that. Thank God for that. Okay. But at any rate, so I'm going to go see um, how many people we are um, entertaining at this moment because um, I like to give everybody a few minutes to catch up with us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people have a little bit of a hard time finding us. So I'd love to see if you are here watching with us, please let us know where you're from. Hello, Pat, Lori, Janet, Helen, let us know where you're from and, um, you know, yeah. and maybe how you know Nancy. And if you don't, <laughs> now you will. <laughs> so Nancy. What I love what I love, Cindy, about teaching for Artful Webinars is I have students from all over the country. And it's like girls that I would have never, ever painted with before. Now I've painted with them, you know, through you. And that's the exciting part, because usually I just have painted with girls on the East Coast, you know, right. going to NED or if I've gone to their chapter, you know. So yeah, I've, I, I know. Yeah, actually. <sighs> the internet is a whole nother world because it yeah. is the world. It's mm -hmm. not just the East coast or the West coast. It's right. everybody from, I've got Canada to South Africa, to South America, Africa, yep. to Australia, to Switzerland. I mean, I never know who's going to pop in. So it's really kind of, I know, kinda, I know. Kinda it is, it's kind of neat. It's really fun that way. I think. And, and I, and, and I really love it because you get to share your talents with so many people um, that wouldn't otherwise have had a mm -hmm. chance to take a class with you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So it's a plus for them as well. I know. I know. Yeah, it's great. So welcome. Welcome, Brenda, everybody who's here. Thank you for joining us. Feel free to ask questions in the comments and I'll start asking questions, but I do run out quickly. And uh, so go ahead and feel free to ask your questions. So the first one, obviously really difficult, Nancy. 
Tell us where you're from. Oh, uh, let me see. I am, I'm from upstate New York. I live right outside of the capital of New York. I live right outside of Albany in a suburb. It's called Colony. I was born in Albany and pretty much have grown up here. I really haven't ventured far. My family's in the area. And uh, so I continue to live here. So, and I, the more I do travel around though, the more I, I love where I am from. I feel like I have a great area that I live in. So just outside of Albany. Well, that's nice. It is a beautiful part of the country. I've traveled through Albany several times. My daughter yeah. went to Ithaca. Oh, yeah. Okay. To okay. College. So, yeah, yeah, back and forth many times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the whole the whole upstate New York is just really beautiful. It is beautiful. Oh my God, the leaves are gorgeous, and it's a it's a pretty good uh, uh, easy place to live in. There's uh, we have lots of colleges. There's lots of arts. Um, it's really uh, has almost everything you want. And we're only like three hours from New York City, three hours from Canada, uh, Montreal, and easy to get to Boston. So it's really great. It's really pretty good. That is cool. So everybody, you should, if you ever get a chance to go to upstate New York, definitely put it on your bucket list. Yeah. Because you will not be disappointed. It is beautiful. Um, so did you come from an artistic family? Is there art, some form of creativity? It doesn't have to be painting related, but some kind of creativity in your family? I guess uh, I got my artistic things I think from my mom she didn't do art formally I mean she got married she had her children and that was her life pretty much but I do recall as a little girl she used to draw pictures for me for me to color in almost like she was my little coloring book person you know and I remember her drawing lots of pictures and me coloring them in with crayons and that's how I you know I think of my mom as getting me started in art but um I'm really the only one that does painting my um both my sisters are very artistic as far as interior design and they have a flair for colors and things like that. So probably it all runs in the family, just in, goes in different branches of art. You know, that's what I would say. And uh, yeah, you know, well, that, that interior design, I mean, that is an art form and that's a whole, it is, it whole is. Other world, but it, don't you find that like you, when obviously you get together and you talk with your, your siblings and whatnot. Yeah that you can talk the same language. Yes, yes, yes. We really do see things the same way. Uh, it's easy to explain, you know, when you're talking about uh, design, you know, how you're going to set up your room or the things you're going to buy to decorate your room or stuff like that. Um, we're yeah. all kind of like on the same page and we can understand each other. I mean, right. that's compared to like talking to my husband about it or something like, you know, that doesn't happen, <laughs> you know? Well, because the color language is the same too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how the use of color. Yes. Yep. Yep. So, um, so that's there. Then you are from a very artistic family for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, when did you start realizing that your journey of in the art industry? When did you, when did you start painting or whatever art form you started to other than coloring coloring your mom's drawings <laughs> when I got to be a, in my teens I started to dabble on my own in oil paints and I remember painting landscapes on canvases when I was a teenager and I didn't really have any formal training in that but I just knew I liked to paint so I used oil paints and I bought oil paints and brushes or my parents bought them for me and I just practiced and did my own thing and um so I guess that's how I started with that. Uh, then I kind of moved on to decorative painting. That wasn't really until like 1990. My youngest daughter, who is 34, when she was two years old, uh, I'm a dental, I was a dental hygienist. That was my career in my life, a dental hygienist. Did, did you know I, Arlene Linton was too? Yes, I know. I've met a couple of dental hygienists. I know. And um she, uh, I was working in a practice and this one hygienist that I was working with had to leave, had to be out of work on time on Monday nights because she went to a decorative painting class. She was taking a beginner class. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? Where, where are you going? What is this that you have to do? And so she was taking a learn to do, you know, toll painting class and she had to be out. It was every Monday night for six weeks. So that 
she told me all about that. And that's when I started to take, I took my um, six week beginner class from uh, Paula Lawton, who had a studio in our area called Windholm. And um, she taught decorative painting and um, it went for six weeks. And I noticed that's such a difference now because they don't, you don't really find those classes like that where you have six weeks to really learn it. So I don't, I worry that sometimes people don't get a really good beginner class to get themselves started. Cause I think of all the things she taught us about floating and side loading and comma strokes and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we practiced it and practiced it and practiced it. So I really credit her with giving me such a great foundation um, for learning how to, you know, do our art form of decorative painting. Yeah. It's really, it's really necessary to have, you know, a good amount of time like that. Yeah. You're, you're so right on that. Um, we've all, you know, become advanced painters that we forget what it's like to be a beginner and how intimidating we are to them. We need to, we need to, mm -hmm. to them, right. We need to, I know, try and build this industry back up. I mean, and, and with the, I think with COVID, we've been able to, um, we've been able to, in some respects, because they all had to stay home and they had to do something. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I have heard rumors that some of the teachers are seeing, uh, an increase in younger people. I oh, mean, it might not be 20 somethings, but they're younger right. than 60 something. I know, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. So, so that's something to be said. So uh, would you say that Paula Lawton was your, was your influence or is there oh, other yeah. artists that influenced yep. you as well? Yes, I mean, well, obviously um, as far as famous artists, I mean, Norman Rockwell was someone who I, I've always admired and loved his work. Um, but um, as far as decorative painters, I remember my very first seminar that I ever went to, and I'd only been painting about a year, but it was an oil seminar. It was with Gretchen Cagle. And Gretchen Cagle has passed away, but she was a beautiful uh, oil painter. And um, someone in, through Paula Lawton's group, you know, was telling, talking about this, seminar and I had never done a seminar but it's like yeah I'd like to do that and I still have that piece that I painted and I absolutely love it and I have millions of her books I have so many of her books and pattern packets I have a tendency to really like a lot of the oil painters because that's really my favorite medium even though I mostly design in acrylics because mm -hmm. that's what most students seem to like they feel more comfortable with that but uh I do enjoy um teaching at net um, they kind of have me uh, corralled into doing this every year, a learn to paint in oils class oh, cool. for someone who has absolutely never painted in oils and would maybe like to try the medium. So I try to design, um, you know, a, a project that is attractive enough to, because you know how students, they look at something as like, oh, I want to paint that. I want to paint that. And they don't even look at the level, is it an intermediate piece? Is it an advanced piece? They just see, oh, I wanna do that. And um, so I try to design something that appeals to people, but that is easy. And maybe they only have to buy like two brushes and we can get the whole thing done in two br with two brushes, you know? So it's not a big investment because it's hard. I mean, I'm, you know, to invest in a whole new set of brushes or even a whole new set of paints to do a different medium. But yeah. it's really fun. The class always fills. They have me just uh, accept 15 students. And um, it's always full because people are kind of want to try and I make it easy to try. You know, you just have to get two brushes and show up and I'll have everything else for you. I think I so. think that going to a live convention is is a time to try new things and like when yeah. I would go I would take a watercolor class and an oil mm -hmm. class because those are two things that I'm not proficient in right right and I find that like you say it's easy to go and try these because the investment is small mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? I know. And, and when you have when you have a teacher like you that makes it easy then you you can't not try it you've got to try right. it so, yeah it seems like everybody enjoys it and sometimes they'll take it again the next year even though they're not a be really a beginner but they haven't done it in between but they want to just kind of keep doing refresh it your course it's <laughs> yeah it's kind of fun it's kind of fun you know so so when did you actually start teaching and and and, and as a teacher 
teaching. Did you start teaching other people's designs first? Yes, yes. I got to think. I did start um, probably about five or six years after I first started painting. I and I did. I taught other people's designs, and um, you know, because you, you buy books and you see them in the books, and they always have a thing that. Well, you always read where it says, you know, you can teach this. It's okay, you know, like to a group. And um, so I usually did. I started teaching with uh, other people's designs. I can't really remember when I first did my very own design. Did you I know start I did. teaching in acrylics or did you start? Oh, acrylics. Teaching acrylics. Yeah, I taught in acrylics. Okay. So and when then, did you switch over? When did you switch over from, from oils to acrylics? Or I kind of have done it at the same time. I, I did oils as a teenager on my own, but my beginner class in decorative painting uh, with Paula Lawton was in acrylics oh, okay. um, with, with the bottled acrylics. So then I just kind of kept going on and painting in that. And a lot of the books that I would buy, I mean, um, would be, you know, in acrylics. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then I taught in acrylics. And I did teach a couple of uh, learn to paint, I mean, like beginner classes through us, um, like an adult education um, Thing in our area but it only went like for four weeks and then I did one at the college and that went for four weeks and it, I designed my own project something that would incorporate everything I mean where I would teach them about of course floating color uh, it would have a lot of line work in it it would have some dry brushing in it it would have maybe some comma strokes in it so I could try to pull in you know all the things that I remember learning in my beginner class mm -hmm. you know so I designed mm -hmm. that on my own and so how many years do you think you were painting and teaching before you started designing? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I probably became a designer about 20 years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. I should go back and look at my... Um, I've saved every publication that I ever had, a, had an article in. I've saved them. That's and I, I should have looked back to see when the very first one was. I can't remember when that was, but probably was about 20 years ago. Wow. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I know my I, I know mine was 2009 because that's the first ones I submitted to net and they oh okay it's like wow okay oh. <laughs> but I painted for like you said probably I painted 20 years before I mm -hmm. started designing you know oh. that's pretty cool um do you did you have or did you ever have any other job before you became an art you said a dental hygienist right yeah so, dental hygienist I went to uh college for that right out of high school and in fact my very first job I went to work for an older guy um, and I didn't know it but he was like head of the residency program on the hospital in our area so I didn't really didn't know how uh, how elite he was maybe and uh, but I remember at my interview with him he did ask me, he asked me because he knew I was kind of like fresh out of school. This was my first job out of school. He asked me about my hobbies. Did I do any, anything with my hands? Like, did I knit or crochet or he hmm. wanted, I guess he wanted to kind of get an idea how dexterous I was because you have to be rather dexterous to be a dental hygienist. Uh -huh. And uh, this was his way of kind of figuring out if I maybe had any skills to uh, accept this job. But I thought that was pretty cool that he thought of asking me that. So yeah. I told him about my painting and uh, that I knew how to embroider and uh, do cross stitch and stuff like that. Yeah, so. yeah that, I, I did the same thing. I did cross stitch before I found painting. It's like, that's a thankless, thankless uh, art form. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, my mother and my grandmother were really excellent sewers. And uh, so they taught me, you know, that they kind of taught me you know, fabric stuff and stitchery and all that kind of stuff. But oh, that's fun. That's yeah. a lot of fun. Um, did you ever? OK, so we already went through this. Sorry. Um, how do you come up with your designs? Well, I like to go to Pinterest a lot. You know, like if I if I want to come up with like a an idea, like a subject matter and like if I want to paint Oh, it's like some flower that doesn't grow around here that I don't really have one in front of me. I just look it up on Pinterest and they will have lots of photos and, and stuff like that. And I will use Pinterest a lot to be able to have a reference um, to get, um, 
you yeah. know, to get my designs going, to get my designs going. I mean, my favorite things to paint are landscapes. I love winter snow, snow scenes. A lot of my patterns are about snow, you know, snow scenes. And uh, so you can always find lots of beautiful winter scenes on Pinterest, photos and other people's artwork and stuff like that. So, so just to, just to make sure that, that we give people the right impression, you're not infringing on anybody's copyright when you do that. Oh, no, no, no. But like, if I don't have something, like if I want to paint a barn and I don't have any barns, like right in my area or something, you can get photos of all of that kind of stuff on, you know, Pinterest that you can get your sketch from to you know, then bring a painting to not to copy another painting or anything, but you have to be able right. to look at something. So to make, to but I want to make sure that people understand, make sure that it's royalty free. Or yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, if the photographer wants credit that you would credit them for. the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if, if No, you, sometimes I've actually done uh, things where I, where I will say, you know, yeah. like um, uh, this was inspired by blah, 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 you know, because you're not copying it, but you're, you know, you saw and it's like, oh, that's really nice. I love the colors or I love, you know, whatever. But yeah. uh, I just want everyone else to know that you're not, you're not doing yeah. anything. Yeah. <laughs> <Wrong>. no. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, you have to say this because people yeah. who go on there and then they paint from something, a person's painting, and then they go post it as their original paint. Right. Right. And like, yeah. Don't do that. It's not right. Good. Right. <laughs> but even not even on Pinterest, but just even to Google and like if certain flowers and then a, a nursery will come up. If I Google a certain type of flower mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't grow in my area, but that I, I would love to be able to paint, you just Google it and a nursery, like different nurseries will pop up and they'll have their products that they want you to buy their flowers. And that gives you really beautiful, realistic. Uh, Definitely. Things to work from. I like getting, I like getting the different perspectives, you know, mm -hmm. how, because they take, when you image, when you Google images, they give yeah. you different perspectives, exactly. and different yeah. color fields and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, do you ever, do you ever go to the, to the flower, the, you know, garden centers or whatever, and just, if you see, or on vacation, you see a flower you like, you whip, oh, out, yeah. your, whip out your phone and take pictures yeah. of it. Yeah, I mean, there's some beautiful sea world. Like I go to Cape Cod a lot. I like to go to Cape Cod and sometimes there's just some absolutely beautiful flowers there. And I do, I take pictures of them all the time. In fact, the screensaver on my phone is a beautiful rose with all these dew drops on it that I saw in Cape Cod. So that's still on my phone from years ago, but it's just such a pretty picture. Maybe you have to paint it. <laughs> yes, I know, right? Yeah, maybe you have to paint it. So, um, we talked about your oil and you use oils and, and mm -hmm. you use acrylics, but you, you definitely favor oils. Is, is I do. Easy? I find that oils is really easy. Uh, I know that people don't think that they think of it as like a fine art thing and that, that is hard, but oils is really easy. I think because it doesn't dry right away and you get to, to work where you get to play with it more on your surface with the brush with the brush strokes and everything like that and the blending you don't have to worry that your float is exactly perfect or what you did was exactly right because it's already dried and then you'd have to go back and fix it but with oils you can really play with it a lot and it's it's just very relaxing i find oils is very relaxing and that's that's for, different for me but <laughs> oh i know i know that's, that's what i'm looking forward to i saw um Mary Jibalisco is going to be teaching this like a still life. And it's like, oh my God, I love that. And she is such a great teacher. And I love, I mean, listening to her voice, she's just so relaxing. So I got to sign up for that. Oh, cool. Well, don't hesitate. <laughs> I really like her stuff. I love her stuff. She's a great teacher too. Yeah, I mean, she is. She's I really have good. to admit that I am surrounded by the most awesome teachers in our industry. You being one of them. I Thank mean, you. all of, all of them really have a way of teaching that makes everybody feel very relaxed mm -hmm. yeah and so that's really that's really a, a plus for the students to know that whatever artful webinar class they're in they're going to have a good time it's mm -hmm. going to be a great time um what's your favorite technique and now i mean the te techniques vary between mediums do you do you feel that they vary between mediums 
Um, well, your brush strokes are different uh, between mediums, obviously. Um, but I don't know if the, I mean, if, I'm trying to, I know when you, you told me about that question and I was thinking about what is a technique that I could, I, I just love, I guess, forming the dimension of an object or, you know, with, with uh, all the different value changes. And that's what's really fun in oils is um, making something really come to life. Because, you know, if you have, to make something look relatively realistic, you have to have at least three values. You need to have your medium value and then a light and a dark. But uh, what's really fun, especially when you're working uh, with oils, is to go that step further and maybe get five or six values. And that's what's really fun is to see an object really become realistic or come alive by adding in all those values. And um, I find it very easy to do in oils. And I find it easy to do in acrylics too, because I do like to paint it in acrylics. It's not that I don't like to, I do. Uh, it's just it's just different. And um, so, so I, I don't know do if there's a real technique. I'm still really practicing um, dry brushing a lot um, because I have a tendency to float my highlights, uh, maybe like with a back-to-back -back float or something like that, if I'm doing a highlight in the middle of something. but. I know a lot of the teachers go with dry brushing and I just have to really work on, on that because I admire that too. I mean, when I've painted things with Maxine Thomas, I mean, I love her stuff too. And I mean, I design totally different than her, but I really love her stuff. So I have to work on my dry brushing. So I'm good like that. And Lynn Andrews, I mean, she doesn't float the way that we float. She floats a different way. And whenever I take a class from her because she's come to our chapter and I've uh, taken classes from her. I always try, I, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do it the way that she does it and I'm gonna practice and I'm gonna try. And then I have a little hard time and then I just go back to floating the way I normally do and then it comes out fine too. So I try different techniques, it's just- Go I'd back like, to, go back to, ooh. Yeah, go I'd like to get to better your, at some of them. Right, the so other, it's like go back to your comfort zone, right? Yeah, but right I found, I found Lynn Andrews, what, what helped me to understand her technique is um to think of it as a watercolor okay because her technique is the way watercolorists approach their work okay yeah i know so she with, she's with really the background brush and yeah. the paint on the tip and using the the well part of those bristles as the water yep. part to yep. radiate the color mm -hmm. yeah so I will, I will do that sometimes if i have to get in a little tight area you know, and in fact, when I was at NET, I mean, I have a set of her brushes that I had asked my husband for for Christmas last year. And he got me a nice set of her brushes because they are very well made. And then um, when I was at NET this year, I went and I bought a couple more because it's always good to have the extra ones, you know, as the ones start to wear out, you know, so. Yeah, that's great. So um, do you have a favorite brush that leads us into that question? Yeah, well, you know, I was thinking about that too. Uh, and I was so looking forward to Chris Hoy being there uh, with her booth because one of her brushes that I got, um, I don't know how I can hold it up in the- Put your hand in, in behind it. There you go. Okay. So this is Chris's awesome angle. It's a one eighth inch angle and it's got a, um, a long toe, a long, let me put it over right here. No, nope, it's, it's not to, a long, to your right, to your right. To my right, to my right? Yeah, right there. Okay, it's got a long toe to it. And what I really like about this brush is that long toe can really, when I'm floating color, like when I'm getting down to that, um, that second dark value when I want to really get the dark down in the little corners and the little V areas, this little toe, this long toe really works very well. So I, uh, I really find myself using that a lot when I'm trying to um, float in some really tight areas. I recommend this brush a lot. So it's, cool. very, it's one of my favorite acrylic brushes. I still yeah. haven't found my favorite liner and I would like suggestions on that but uh, from anybody, but um, maybe I just don't take care of them good enough and then they start to kind of lose their shape and 
Well, liners you know. don't have that many hairs, so it's very easy to, you yeah. know, for them to go bad fast. So I know, I is, know. Uh, but for for anyone who's interested in this uh, angle, it's cre uh, Creative Arts Lifestyle. No, that's Cindy Roll. That's um, Patricia Rawlinson. Um, what is Chris Hoy's booth? It's oh, CD Wood. CDWood.com, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, she has a liner brush, which is fine, and she has a round brush. But her awesome angle is what that's what it actually says right on the on the label here. This awesome angle. Chris's awesome angle, and I really do like that brush. It's really great for when you have to float in a little small tight area and you want to have good control. I like that brush a lot. I like so, the color. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty neat. That is pretty neat. Cool. So um, before, before I go on to the next few questions, I want to just say thank you again for being here and sharing your artful journey with us, but oh, you're welcome. All those people in the audience watching, thank you for being here. If you have any questions, I am running out. So please go ask some questions. Uh, for Nancy to answer so that we can uh, learn a little bit more about her journey. And let's go on to the next one. I have, what is your best tip to a student? I guess it kind of goes back to what we were talking about before, how important it is to have a really good foundation to get started, to have a really good beginner class. Um, and that involved a lot of practicing. So I found that if you just practice and practice and practice, because a lot of times students will struggle with floating and I can just tell when I have them in my class, it's like, I don't know if anybody ever really showed them how to do it the right way. So I will do like this little intermediate, this little beginner, just this is how you load your brush. Cause I know if we can get floating down and you can do it really good, you're going to be so happy with your project, you know? And, um, so I think that all comes down from having to having a really good foundation. In fact, one of the things they talked about at NET afterwards um, was the possibility of having some type of um, like just a refresher course for beginning, all the beginning stuff that you have to learn about, about even just um, base coating an object right. I mean, if I base coat something that's round like an apple or a pear, I'm going to use a round brush. I'm not going to use one with a harsh angle to it. And just all basic stuff like that. And they are thinking about maybe offering something like that for people that haven't painted in a while or they just really maybe are worried about their skills. And um, I think- Need a refresher awesome. course, yes. Yeah, yeah <laughs> just a refresher course, you know? So I know you mentioned a uh, dry brush earlier, but is, mm -hmm. that, is that the- medium or subject or technique that you would like to try you haven't done yet other than dry brushing? Well, um, I noticed a lot of the beautiful colored pencil classes and years ago at NET, I took a little, it was more like a make it take it thing where they had colored pencils when I think we color penciled on a, like a bookmark. And I see so many beautiful things and there were so many beautiful things at NET and colored pencils that I'd really like to try to get into that and learn about that. You know, I know there's a whole new investment with, you know, pencils and all that kind of stuff. But um, so that's something I'm really interested in trying. Colored pencils. A, even, even Lynn Andrews started introducing pencils into her artwork as well. So you can- oh, Really? Actually, I didn't know that. Yeah, you can marry the both. Um, Erica Joanne does it. And oh yes, I've seen that, people. yeah. So they, and uh, Amy Mogish does it. So you have mm -hmm. the acrylic base and you do the color pencil on top to highlight and- Oh, shade. is that how it works? Okay. That's yeah. a whole nother, you know, oh, whole nother realm for you to explore. Yeah, I would like to, because I, I, it's just beautiful. You know, the things I saw at NET and, and the things that I see online and, and the things I see at, um, you know, offer webinars, it's like, I'd like to learn how to do that. I'm a little scared to try to take a class if it looks like, a little more sophisticated, like it's not a beginner class, but I suppose I could keep up. I could try it. A lot of people think that there, I've had many questions for our webinars. Do I have any beginner colored pencil classes? And I'm like, truly, Nancy, you can't go wrong with a Janelle Johnson, a Lydia Steves, or a Mark Menendez. Okay. You know, or a Debbie Cushing. All mm -hmm. four of them are colored pencil artists with, with um, artful webinars. 
And although their projects look very, some of them look very intimate. Yeah, they um, need a little bit. Yeah, they're not. And they they walk you through every step. And, and okay, okay. I, you should, if you can, if you can, if you Yeah, you're not, I do, I do, I want to try. If you're not pencils. teaching all the time, like no, you do, I want to try color teaching, pencils. you should try one. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really fun. Um, I don't get to do any of it, but I know oh. that <laughs> if I did, it would be really fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So do you have other hobbies besides, I know you said you did needlework and cross stitch. Are you still actively doing those as well? No, or not really. I mean, I pull my sewing machine out every once in a while and I have to adjust something for one of my kids, but, uh, I really don't. I mean, I was working all my life and then I had my children, then I had my grandchildren, then I babysit my grandchildren. So, I mean, every once in a while I get to read a book, which I really enjoy, but, um, mostly it's all painting because I'm, I'm always got ideas in my head. I'm always working towards the next thing that I might submit to you or that I have to submit to Ned or I want to submit to a magazine. And, you know, there's so much lead time involved with all of these things that I'm always just mostly painting, but I'm happy with painting. I love painting. Well, that's good because we love it that you keep <laughs> painting. <laughs> that's why I tell everybody um, that's my job in life is to keep the teachers busy and, right. and, and so that they keep designing and uh, so that we can keep selling webinars because that's yep. what it's all about. Right. Um, I was going to say, when you mentioned that you started landscaping, um, you know, oil painting landscapes and stuff, did you save any of those from your childhood? Oh, no, no, I never did. No, oh, not I a didn't, one, I huh? Didn't. No, I never, I didn't. I gave them away to different people, but I never really saved any. Oh gosh, I know. Wouldn't it be fun? To I still have things I did like in seventh grade. My first oh, yeah. decoupage, you know, we cut out a yep. Christmas card and I decoupage it on a piece of wood and I stained the wood and all this other stuff. And it's like, I can't believe my mother saved that stuff. But I know, I know, right? I have it. <laughs> so um, what, tell us about what projects you've got coming up for Artful Webinars, if you have them. Okay, right yeah, I got them right show. here. I have... Well, my little cardinal guy here, so you're right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's coming up in what a couple, I think it's a week from Friday. I'm teaching yeah. that. a week from Friday and that's an acrylics. And, um, so I'm looking forward to that. I know some people I put a post on about trying to find the plate and, uh, but there are alternatives if they can't find this exact plate. And, uh, I talked about that in my post, so I'm going to be doing that. And then the tea kettle is going to be a couple of weeks after that. This project is in acrylics. And You're right. yep. Is that I right? I think it's so beautiful. Yeah. And this was originally uh, when we were going to have net last year and it got canceled. This was going to be the special event. And, um, and then when the pandemic hit and we canceled net, and this comes from uh, Painter's Paradise. The surface comes from Painter's Paradise. And there was a little question as to whether or not she was going to be able to get the surface from China mm -hmm. and have enough of them, you know, for a special event. Because, you know, you, you put a class out there and you have to be able to accept, you know, up to 30 students or more. And so when that was a, in question, I thought, I can't take the chance on that. So then I just put that aside and I designed something totally different for the special event for, for net for this year, but they have these in stock and they're on sale. Um, and it's a great little surface to work on. It was very easy, um, to work on. And, um, I just had, I'll go back. I'll show you it just looks plain, just a second. <laughs> So yes, if anyone is here who has questions for her, please post away. Yeah. So I have one left over and it's all, it's pretty shiny, but I just had to, I just sprayed it with a little matte spray and I was able to put my pattern right on. So it's really easy. And then when it's all done, then I just spray it with a, you know, a satin. So it's already black. Oh, it's already black. It comes wow. just like that from Painter's Paradise. Wow. I think she said she had it, it was on sale for 1350 or something like that. It's oh, a good wow. little size. It's adorable. And um, so, and that's what we will be painting a week from Friday. I think it is or two weeks from Friday. I don't know. I got it on the <laughs> calendar, but um, 
So, but it, and of course it's all decorative. So you just like set it out. It's not something that's functional, but it would be really pretty for your uh, holiday decor. So mm. and that's what's coming up. Cool. Yeah, I'm looking to see what the what the date is, and I don't have it. Let's see. Um, I know Nancy Scott. We have the Christmas Cardinal, which is 10:29. That class is full, correct? Yes. And then, um, and then did we do a? Um, oh, we Christmas tea is November 7th. Oh, as a Sunday. Go. That's when I'm teaching the tea kettle on November 7th. Okie dokie. Yep. Cool. Yep. So definitely sign up for that. Now, where, where, I mean, you just taught net, you're coming down from that. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's next besides the webinars? Um, I am teaching a, a class for, uh, through the SDP, through the Decorative Painters Academy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, here, I brought that one so that little thing right there, Decorative Painters Academy. And uh, that's a Zoom thing. But I am going to be doing, I did my very first uh, in-person travel teaching that, you know, since the pandemic started out in um, central New York, I went and did a seminar. And that was really fun to really be back out with students again. And, you know, it, it was really great to be in person again. And I have, I'm going to be going to New Jersey um, in June. I am going to be doing some um, going to Texas. I'm a little nervous about going to Texas, but I was invited to come to uh, the Fort Worth chapter in Texas in May. And uh, I said, yes, I would love to come, but we'll just kind of see how this pandemic thing goes. Cause you know, the governor in Texas has a little different view about things than the governor <laughs> in New York. So <laughs> I said, and the, we, we both decided we're just going to wait and see how things go. Yeah. And, uh, but like you I were saying, uh, through Zoom, the uh, Northwest Decorative Painters out in, well, I think they're from Oregon. They contacted me and want me, wanted me to do a Zoom seminar. So I would have never painted with that chapter, but now I am. Yeah. So that is really good. Because so I would say you can fun. even do that with Texas if things I know, you know, are a little hairy. Right? You yep. can do that with Texas as well. I know. That's I know. So, so cool we'll see how it. she works that out. But mm -hmm. so that's what's kind of coming up and of course I teach for my chapter and uh, in February so I got a few little things going on did they did they open up to other people your chapter does it you know if, if someone from a, from another part of the country wanted to come to the chapter you know I know when they do the seminar like Paulette is doing Paulette de Jezer is doing a beautiful seminar for us uh, a one-day thing in November and I know that has opened up to whoever wants to do it mm -hmm. and um um but I don't know if they do it with our general meetings. Some of the places where we have our meetings, we don't have Wi-Fi. So it would not be easy to, you know, to kind of zoom it. So, yeah. but we've been talking about that. And what's really hard right now too, is finding uh, locations to have your meetings because a lot of the places that we may have used in the past uh, aren't open to the public, like a, certain libraries and stuff like that anymore to have people gathering in a large group. So, um, a lot so of things still, are still up in the air. A lot yeah. of still mm -hmm. up in the air, unfortunately. So where can people, I mean, people don't seem to have a lot of questions for you today, but where can people find uh, more of your, your patterns? And, and, and well, basically just at my website, uh, nancyscottcda.com. Uh, I just had put some new things up there. I finally got up the projects that I taught at net. And um, so that's where they can go. Cool. That's where they can find all my pattern packets and I can either mail them to them or they can download them either way. Oh, they so they can still get a hard copy. They can still get a hard copy. Yeah. The hard copies, I, I charge $8 for my hard copy uh, patterns, but it's $6 if they want to download it. Mm -hmm. Cool. And usually sometimes people want to download a certain one and then they want a hard copy of another one that's happened about three or four times and I and I text them and I'll say which way do you want it no you really want it <laughs> and I say that's fine I'll send it to you that helps <laughs> yeah so, thanks to Sandy she put your uh, link to your website in the chat so feel thanks, free to Sandy. go check out Nancy's website thank and, you um and see what she's up to follow her uh 
as she travels around the east coast yeah. and central america you're you're getting far now you go into the central you I might know. be going to I the know. west coast just I yet know. so um is there anything else you'd like to tell us about um what you're up to or, or um things you're working on that you hope to have come out soon <laughs> well i uh I <laughs> I know I sprung and I sprung one on her. So. <laughs> I'm in the middle of designing. This is going to be something. Uh, Ready. This That's way. on your right. To so your right. we're going to have tulips coming up here. This is going to be something called uh, waiting for spring because I have a robin. You can't see it. I have a robin right here because robin is a, a bird, you know, native to my area. And then I just put some violets up there and some tulips coming up, but there's still snow on the ground. So is that going to be an ARPA webinar? I'm not sure. I know I have to teach, I have to uh, teach something to my chapter and I might teach it to my chapter for February, but um, that's gonna it's going to be pretty once I get that bird in there with his red breast and everything. And that's like an image from him. It's like, all you have to do is Google a Robin, you know, like from upstate New York, because I know there's different types of robins. And oh. uh, I got a beautiful uh, picture of him that I did a sketch from. And then I just, because I've never painted a robin before, and I, they obviously don't hold still enough for me to really uh, <laughs> paint them live. But that's how I got a robin that I'm going to stick right in this picture right here. So it's already so beautiful. But that's what I'm working on. Kind of so like a winter wanting to get to be spring. You know how the tulips and sometimes the daffodils come right up through, through the, the snow. snow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I don't know how they do it, but they do it. <laughs> the crocus but, is usually first. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what I'm working on. So it's uh, Helen, Helen Russell's here. Ooh, I'm in her chat. Oh, Helen, Helen. Oh, she was such a help to me at net. Oh my God. She monitored two of my classes. I don't think I could have done it without her. She was great. She was so good. Helen, I'm glad you're here. Well, she said she loved being your monitor. Early. Yeah, she was really so helpful. She so you can go and check out all your accolades over in the Facebook chat. And, um, okay. and thank you everyone for being here tonight and watching and hearing all about Nancy Scott, CDA's artful journey. And thank you, Nancy, for seeing Thanks, Cindy. Thanks for having me on. This and thank good. you for being part of the Artful Webinars family. So of course. Everybody pop on over to Artful Webinars and sign up for her classes and, you know, the, the latest, newest, well, newest thing, which has been probably the last four or five months, is that you can be on a wait list. So if you go to one of Nancy's classes and it's sold out, definitely sign up for the wait list because if there's enough interest, we always open our repeat class if we can, mm -hmm. if it works out for the teacher yeah. to um, have another date, we'll, we'll open up one for uh, a repeat class. So don't hesitate to leave your name and information behind. Um, I guess that's it for today. Okay. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you, everybody. It was Thank nice you. to see everybody. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um,